All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lolly Gaggin. Uh, we are back to playing some Broom tonight. We are unfortunately down Aaron uh, as bureaucracy has grabbed him, uh, and uh, but we'll be hopefully have him back next week, and uh, hopefully he'll still have a character because his character's fate is in the hands of the four other people you see on the screen. So Aaron, if something happens, it's not my fault; it's theirs. So there you go. Just letting you know. So. If you come back and you have to play a ogre ogre thief, it's Jeremy's fault. It's because Jeremy killed you, <laughs> and then he made your backup character while you're gone. That's kind of how it's going. It's work. true. I, I've I, already made it. It's oh, I would yeah. love Aaron to play an ogre thief. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be good. He'd be <laughs> a really be good, good job of too. He would. It'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. So it would be too good of an ogre thief. He'd somehow be the sneakiest thing there is, and just like no one will see him. Uh, but yeah, we're going to persevere nonetheless, uh, and we're going to see where we go. we got a lot of weird different directions we can go tonight. I'm not entirely sure, uh, what they all have planned. Uh, but, uh, we're going to find out pretty quick as I, I think we should just, we should just dive in. So let's just, let's just do that. Uh, so last time around, uh, we saw Mad Jack and Damien, uh, our new party member ran into a little bit of trouble while they were trying to return our dear kitty, uh, to the wild. Uh, some of it was just mundane trouble, but then on your way back, uh, a group of vagrants attacked you, uh, and they started chanting ragama, ragama over and over again, as they were trying to essentially pull Damien's armor off while also hitting him with rocks and things like that. Uh, you guys killed a few, uh, you didn't really take any damage. I don't think at all. Uh, you killed a few, but then eventually you let a couple survivors go free, but you did ask them a few questions. You learned that they were sent by someone either named red eye or Galamar, uh reference blackmore uh ragama is like they refer to as like the mother or mother and they were all sort of the impression uh because they were told that you all were witch hunters that was sent to kill them uh and that's why they were attacking you uh meanwhile nazca rowena jinzo you all went to the seamstress's rest which is a very fairly nice inn uh right, right, roughly across the street from ordo magica and you listened to gossip uh, in the local neighborhood, hoping to hear a little bit about Gwydion and Dismas. Uh, you heard that there were two barbarians that were seen being their usual obnoxious selves late last night and were presumably cleared away by town watch. That's that's kind of the, the general prevailing theory. Uh, early in the morning, there was also some kind of traffic incident with there was a wagon that was kind of stuck in the road. Uh, and then you also learned a little bit about Cargoy Salamos, this guy who uh, you all have... Um, have been pointing at because he might be the one, it seems like he might be the one behind uh, all of the harassment and attacks on Sarvola. Uh, you heard that despite him losing his, his family in the great war, he is said to be very good to his servants as he uh, supplies them with the highest quality foods and meats. Uh, and uh, eventually the party reunited. You decided to pay a visit to uh, Lysandra Goldengrass, a well-known fortune hunter because her name appeared in the scribblings of Anadea, when you were going through her belongings uh, and something about the Hall of a Thousand Tears, that kind of stuff. She welcomed you inside, showed a little bit of disdain uh, for the Ambrian ability, uh, but ultimately agreed to make an introduction between yourselves and her friend Miroel, who was, uh, was referenced as possibly knowing how to reach the Hall of a Thousand Tears, which is where you think Anadea went because then like her, whoever she was working with to sort of investigate this cult stuff uh, might be there, something like that. Uh, and so she set a meeting for you all tomorrow evening near Black Brew Tavern. Uh, but it is not tomorrow evening. It is in fact today, it is Water Day. Did I tell you all that I know the, um, the names of the, the names of the, the days? So today is Water Day. It's basically a Monday. What are tomorrow, they all? <laughs> tomorrow is Wind Day. <laughs> it is the 9th of Tomal. Yeah. In the 22nd year. So I expect everyone thenceforth to be using <laughs> appropriate terminology when referencing this. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You all are in the Fortune Hunters District, which is the southeast section of town. You're relatively close uh, to the eastern square and to the eastern gate. Uh, you still have a few hours of daylight left today. I turn it over to you as you walk out into the streets. What does everyone want to do? Where do you guys want to go? What are you talking about? What are you thinking about? What's going on? Talk to you. With plans to go to Blackmore to investigate yes. this red eye. You fella. had some friends there or something, Jinzo? Oh no, it's what Sir Damon and Magic ran into this morning. Oh right. Oh. Yeah, we, we do have we, we do have our, our our 
dearly departed friend Atolia, her her mother lives there, and she she may know mm. a bit about what's been going on. As I look around to who's in the group and realize that Aaron would be the only one that shares like the long history of that with mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. At the very least, Jinzo would know who you're talking about. The other two wouldn't. Uh, yeah, you've mentioned that name before, but I'm afraid I don't have a face to go with it. And you won't because she's departed, but we we can introduce you to her mother. Hopefully she will be happy to see us. Oh, very good. Well, then let's be on our way and okay. find your uh, bigger attack party. Okay. Well, maybe. Uh, I, I feel really bad for them. I think they were misinformed in a pretty horrific way. Yeah. Just a way to clear mis- misunderstanding. Someone said someone after so. us. We've got to clear names. Or we. This is crazy. Maybe there are witch hunters out there, and maybe they just got the wrong person. Well, what would have attracted witch hunters out here? Witches. Well, yes, yeah. there are witches at the other side of the door, but like <laughs> even witch me. hunters can't. Okay, yes, it's yes. I applaud you. Yes, you're right. There are witches. I had absolutely <laughs> no idea they were outside the door this whole time. I you're must welcome. have been blind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I meant. Well, look, witch hunters. I don't see them attacking the actual witches that are. Mm. With the elves outside the the door, that seems, even for them, very ambitious. So who Mm, in mm. the town might have attracted? Like, is there something coming out of the hole that we don't know about? Is there, they are maybe trying to find the same cult that we are? (sighs) We might have to hurry. I don't like competition if they are. What if instead of being competitors, we work Mm. together? If they no. really are hunting the same people, we, isn't, we could. isn't like enemy it, of your enemy, like possibly a friend or something? The more information leaks there are, the faster the information travels and the less useful and worthwhile it is having. I mean, we've been adding someone just about every other day. So I, yes, I it's think fascinating we're fascinating how a, people are attracted to you, Ruane, honestly. You must have some odd uh, charisma of some kind emanating from you that I can't detect or something. It would appear that you don't think so, but that's okay. We'll see who we meet. You're clearly a very charming lady. Her persuasive is only 10, to be honest. It's pretty average. (laughs) True. (laughs) Uh, But... But it, it's okay. I'm 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 more here for 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 knowing things than uh, bringing people into the fold. But hopefully, welcoming as as you all come in. I'm glad that you're here and glad that we know a little bit more about you, Nazca Argona. Rowena, dear, and Nazca will put her arm on Rowena's shoulder. You speak with uh, uncertainty. But you are correct. You know things and you need to work on your confidence. All right, let's go. Okay. So with that, Nazca, you lead everybody out of the Fortune Hunters District past all these other homes that are mostly people who are either, uh, they're either Fortune Hunters currently, like coming back from expeditions, or they're retired, right? And so that's, there's kind of a mixture of that. That's this this section of town, effectively, what it is. So, like, I think I referred to it as kind of like new money. It's not necessarily nobility, per se, uh, but it's definitely people who have found success in these expeditions. Oh, they being one of them. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, getting out of the Eastern Gate is not an issue at this time of day. And you get onto the road, and it's not that long. It's a quick jaunt over to Blackmore. Uh, and I'll say that you guys arrive... Uh, I think all of you have been here at some point before, uh, and you see that there is this ramshackle sprawl of tattered tents and sagging lean-tos. The air is very thick with like the unwashed stench of the town of this uh, this tent city, um, and it's 
there's remember there's no walls to protect this place uh so this is just open freely uh so anything from the forest to the north could potentially get down here uh, but we'll say you make it here without any any uh any trouble uh, i'm gonna go ahead and pull you over uh to the blackmore map and do you do you head for the grubbery is that your intention what we're familiar with so i was okay with it okay so you head over and the grubbery remember is where um alevia uh, who is uh, atolia's mother uh currently works she often uh, works in association a little bit with arthur and some of the missionaries several uh, missionaries out here to try to not just she makes she, she has to run a business but at the same time there's certainly a uh, there's certainly some kind of uh collaboration there uh, and we'll say by the time you get over there, it's it's evening or late afternoon. So you can see they're getting ready for like a dinner or a supper rush of some kind. And you can see the uh, the seats uh, around this, uh, the grubbery itself, where there's, it's again, it's not a very formal looking in. It's more like a big tent with these long uh, like picnic tables and people are using whatever they can to sit on. So like an old barrel here, like a crate there. And some of them actually have uh, chairs as well. Uh, and I'll say you also would notice Demian, your friend, Arthur, uh, who is probably the one who helped, uh, direct you towards the rest of the party. Uh, he is a younger, I keep referring to him as a theater. He's actually a litter because those are a little bit, I think, weaker in terms of he's not like extraordinarily strong. Uh, but you can see mm-hmm. he is helping set up some of these pots and like ladling in things to some of the, the more, um, malnourished and impoverished who come in kind of you know tossing over just whatever they can like a, sh- a couple shillings here a couple shillings there not necessarily full price uh, and that's what you see as you walk in and you and you again you see olivia she's there as well so both of these people are you have access to and then there's a, a, a fairly full tent which you guys like to do well, i might go chat up. oh yeah go for it oh i'll go chat up author he might know something about it uh, so okay. i'll just go help him set things up and maybe chat with him in the meanwhile. So he's, you see him like pouring like some, some side of soup into a, into what looks like a clay or earthen bowl, handing it down to this little goblin who, who picks it up and the goblin, like you can see flies buzzing around. They clearly have a stench to them. Uh, and you, you hear, uh, uh, Damien, is that you? Oh, good goodness gracious. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, did you find the others, uh, uh, all right? Yes. Uh, here I, well not all of them there's another one missing i guess it's been a, a very strange uh, several days for them apparently one of them's missing oh uh the, which, which the one? one-eyed one oh the barbarian he and his ward are gone i think they took a bunch of drugs and disappeared well i well that and doesn't maybe necessarily they killed? sound oh well that there sounds quite terrible how you presented it initially didn't sound too terrible looks like they were just having potentially too good a time but now the other side of that coin seems terrible uh yeah i probably should have led with that i'm sorry here, well, we what's the, uh, oh well thank you uh yeah you just hand me the bowls and i i shall and so you get behind and he's like he's ladling in soup and you're handing like these bowls and hanging them out to people as they come up uh and you he know, says I, uh, well yes sorry no, no. This strange after you. thing happened uh, earlier today. Uh, a, a bunch of like starving people uh, tried to kill me. Uh, They're yelling like Ragama or something and talking about Red Eye. Does that name Red. sound familiar? Uh, Maybe Galamar well, or something. Oh yes, Galamar. Yes, yes, yes. He's a, a young man. Uh, lives here in, in Blackmore. Red Eye is a bit of a. It's a nickname, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if he's fond of it or not, but uh, he's, yes, he's a nice man. Um, oh, he's uh, might. No, I don't see him here today. Uh, but uh, oh. yes, he's. I guess, uh, I guess he told him there was a witch hunter coming out, and so they tried to kill me, and that was awkward. And uh, I felt witch really bad coming if I... to kill you. No, I guess the like there was uh, some goblins and a couple other people that were starving. They're chanting the thing, and they tried to kill me, and I tried not to kill them, but then they kept trying to kill me. And we were to let a couple of them live. It was just a really wow. bad morning. I'm glad you provided them some mercy. They sound as if they were quite, well, quite maddened, perhaps. But no, uh, Galamar is a 
Uh, he lives uh, in the southeast corner of uh, a Blackmoor. He's uh, he's a fairly generous man, loving as far as I know. He's many friends. Uh, he's uh, kind-hearted. Uh, occasionally comes here and helps give comfort to some of the outcasts that uh, that come to the missions. Um, okay. He's not necessarily a regular per se, but uh, as far as I know, he has a solid reputation. Okay. Well, it may just be a misunderstanding. Um, I hope so. I, my friends probably have more important questions than I do, but it, it might be good to maybe try and meet with them. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with all that. Well, I don't know exactly which one of his tents is his, but I do know that he is in the southeastern quarter. Uh, okay. I'm sure if you head out in that direction and ask around, I'm sure there's people around there who could point you to him. Uh, he is... Uh, He's a bit of a, a, a neighborhood leader of sorts. Uh, whenever some of the uh, the blood robes, um, and it, like he he says that as if you know who they are, because you do, because you have probably had a run in or two with the blood robes, which is not to be confused with the people with the red sashes. This is a different. Oh. Are, you would know okay. them as a as a mercenary group that are kind oh. of like the guards that were hired as. Like they're kind of like they were hired as town guards, but they're really like mercenaries and they're a little bit cruel mm. and they kind of harass some of Sarvola's missionaries and folk like that. At the same, mm. like at the same time, there's people who make the argument that they're kind of a necessary evil because they do protect the town from stuff yeah. that might you come don't have cruel. walls here. And yeah, it's, it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult situation, but, uh, but yes, oh. it shows shows them no love, and whenever you know they've harassed myself and my brothers and sisters, he has, uh, well, he has uh, he's made sure to to align himself at least with me. So uh, I, again, I can't personally vouch for him. I don't know the man particularly well. Okay, but, uh, yeah, he has a reputation. Well, it sounds like I should give him the benefit of the doubt. We probably should still talk to him because that was just I, I'd hate for something like that to happen again. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Any sort of uh, tragedy like that, we must do everything we can to avert. Yes, sir. Now, are you doing well so otherwise? Busy here. Oh, yes, yes. But people are very hungry. Very hungry yeah. indeed. Oh, I get to, I get to like, uh, see a, a young uh, meerkat the other day. Actually, was that, th that was just this morning, wasn't it? I don't know Jeremy the answer to that, that question, but uh, oh, I'm was Jeremy losing track of the time. I like playing it in. <laughs> like, yeah. like, uh, he just he knows you to be a a, a bimbo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, a mayor cast. Well, and you live to tell the tale. That's excellent. Yes, I got scratched on the hand. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that'll heal just fine. Yeah. Well, uh, no, that is a uh, well. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, not yeah. often we see them within this hold itself. Were you fighting in the Obamatorium or something? No, um, so the, the, the one guy with the mask, Magic, I guess he found the cat and there were like a oh. bunch of these, like, there's like cultists and all sorts of crazy stuff that they've been dealing with, I guess. No. Oh. Well, yes, uh, as I told you, their dealings, they've become embroiled in some sort of, yeah. well, underdark within the society of thistlehold and blackmore and that woman over there as i introduced you the other day it's olivia her daughter was recently killed oh, so yeah they need your strength i mean they need the strength of prios that will help that will help guide them through all of yes. this trouble yes that is a great point i'm gonna let them ask all the tough questions and then i'll just stand tough in front of them I think well, Nesca was hinting maybe I'm talking too much. Yes, that might I don't fair. think I know that name. Oh, she's the fancy lady. Well, hello. Hello there. Don't be shy. Uh, Are you hungry? Yes. Uh, well, uh, yes. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, Sir Damon, did you collect the information you were looking for from your friend? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, we we will go that direction. We don't know exactly which tent this is, but if we go in that direction we'll we'll find him oh one moment Southeast is actually Rowena this grab for Rowena. <laughs> oh that's <laughs> yeah he's, he's pointing repeat northeast. the instructions the directions to this woman yeah. here thank you uh, well, hello, she'll write Rowena. it down so smart 
It's a pleasure to see you again. Yes, to the yes. southeast, I said, is where you might find Galama. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the other southeast. Book. And, and this is Jinzo, yes. who is kind of like a squire to me. We've met. Yes. Yes, we, we have met. I didn't realize you were a squire. I thought you... Weren't you a fighter of sports or something? I am a again? fighter, but this lady here required my squire services. Oh, I do, yes. Well. A very competent fighter. You're a knight. I had no idea. Well, welcome, my lady. Yes. Can Thank I you. get I any of you some food? This, uh, the the, the oh. broth is quite good. I'm all. I'm very full right now. Thank you. I understand. I understand. Now, is there something I, I can help you with? Yes. One additional question. I, we, uh, well, honestly, they uh, did a little bit of investigating, and they found the name of Erebus uh, in oh. a location we weren't expecting. And I'm just wondering, is he actually doing his job and being here, or is he mostly just at the whorehouses and Thistlehold still? Well, um... <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry. The very uh, casually dressed bars in Thistlehold. Oh, I'm quite aware of the brothels, madam. Uh, however, uh, no, uh, the Lord Erebus, he is uh, the bailiff here. Yes, he spends, I would rage, uh, an equal amount of time between his newly constructed keep there at the Black Square and also... Uh, Back in Thistlehold, I don't think he's particularly keen to spend much time here. Most people of his of his birthright would much rather not not stay here. But he does do his work at the behest of his father, though there are some here who suggest that perhaps he and the blood robes are a bit too aggressive. Uh, yes, he is with... a bit of a knobhead. Um, okay, so. <laughs> He like sounds the word out in his mouth. Oh, you can use that. I, I this you feel free to use that. New vernacular that tends to crop up each generation. I'll never catch up. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, okay, I, I appreciate your time. I believe. Of course. Did anybody have additional things that they would like to know about? Yes, Arthur. It's been a bit unruly in this hold. Have you run into any rowdy groups here? Mm, yes, we have, unfortunately. Unfortunately, just, uh, what was that, Damien, two days back, perhaps? Two days, yeah. Uh, yes, there were some, well, aggressors here within the, within the grubbery. They were harassing Solevia. Unfortunately, so Damien and some of the others were able to put them down. Not exactly sure who to attribute them to, but they were very, um, Unruly. Oh, rude. Yes. Um, and um, we continue to suffer some harassment over at the mission mission tents. Uh, we've not heard from Father Sarvola in quite some time, at least three days now, perhaps. Is he well? Do you know? Yes, he should be well. Well, his... Uh, his reputation precedes him, and we continue to suffer the slings and arrows that were meant for him. But we are more than willing to take those, if the man himself is safe. Uh, but beyond that, perhaps, uh, as we said, the aggressors the other day. Nothing that we cannot handle, sir. I see. I'll take a bowl of that soup. Of course. It's really good. Pours it out, hands it over. It's basically just broth with like a handful of like random like herbs or vegetables kind of dropped in, whatever you can kind of grab mm -hmm. from like out in the forest. Um, okay. I'll slide over a, a thaler. Help out the others. Well, it's very generous of you, sir. Thank you very much. May Prius bless you. Kind of makes a little motion, takes it, puts it like in his, in his like little, little purse uh, that he'll then use to, uh, to disseminate as needed. That's a lot of money you just donated. You just keep it, giving so. money away. Everyone keeps saying, like, oh, I don't have any money. And you just you keep giving it away. It was magic. <laughs> yeah. 
I <laughs> won't. Don't from worry. That jack and gave it away. <laughs> Aaron's gonna come back. He's not gonna be dead, but he's gonna be he's even gonna be more broke. broke than he was. <laughs> you get to go steal his bow, bow, sell that, and then pay that up. Okay. All right. So, what do you guys want to do next? We're ready to really just want to go Jinzo. talk to Olivia. Okay. Mm. Okay. Here we go. I can do this. Get the well, Irish hello out. There. Hello there, young girl. It's good to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you coming back now. Oh, it hasn't been the same since my wee had told you left me. God damn it. It's, it's been a sad few days. It's been a sad few days. Oh, indeed it has. I've been weeping myself to sleep every night. Every <laughs> night. These last two nights. It felt, it's, it's truly felt like months since she's been gone. Oh. And Marina will sort of tentatively reach out to sort of like give her a hug and see if this is. She'll like... return it. Of course she will. Okay. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. I know you and Vittoria are good friends. And any friend of Vittoria is welcome here. Oh, you're always welcome. Your 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 array of sunshine is what you are. Oh, Prios himself must have sent you. Well, we were here, and and I, and I wish I could say that I came just to see you, um, because it is good to see you, and I'm glad to hear that you've been hanging in. Uh, we are here to check in about uh, some. Folks here that uh, may actually be uh, wishing us harm, actually, if you can believe it. Oh, oh! Unfortunately, I can. As you know, my daughter was killed just a day, a few days before. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> and everybody jumps right into like somebody's trying to kill the rest of us. So you know, enjoy your time here. <laughs> it's. it's <clears throat> So <laughs> mm -hmm. tragic I moment. Don't mean to laugh. Tragic moment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we did the funeral. We did the tragedy. We can joke around that. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Where? Okay. I'm back. Oh, I'm so, quite. I'm quite disheartened to hear you're still in danger. Is there something I, I can I do to help? Magic was was almost taken out, uh, but this morning. And the information that was given to him was that uh, Golomar or Red Eye, someone that's here, uh, had possibly hired these goblins to kill all of us because they think we're connected to witches somehow. Oh. Well, I don't know much about that. I can tell you that Galamar Red Eye is a bit of a... Well, it's a tease, I think. I think they call him that sometimes. And you know, when he was younger, he's a young man. He's had uh, he had, uh, affliction, got into his eyes and changed them red. Anyhow, like I think folk started to call him Red Eye. And he has a way of of arming himself to, uh, to sort of push back the harassment. He took it on as a as a bit of a, oh, okay. of a nickname. So don't introduce myself to him and call him red eye got oh, it Understood. i think she's i think like, he's he's older now as you know so i think he can handle it but but uh, i i i would be very surprised he seems to have a a good heart from what i've heard i know that he well i know that he's a he's a mother's boy that's for sure he's uh, lost his mother i don't know who his father is but i know that his his mother was a uh, uh, often on his mind, and uh, uh, and uh, I know that he's very good with the uh, uh, with the folk around here who seem the most lost. You know, the folks who, you know, they don't have a roof over their head. They don't. They don't even not even a, a canvas. Uh, they sleep underneath a star or perhaps under a broken wagon. And he takes them in and gives them purpose. So, oh uh, no, I th I think what he sounds like kind a good of man. Purpose? What kind of purpose does he give them? Oh, well, to be honest, I don't quite know. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not a, a particularly close friend of the man, but uh, we, we run in different circles, as you can see. But he's come in here before, and he's been, you know, he's, he's introduced himself to some of the folk around here who needed, 
needed a hand in what he's offered it, so I just assumed that is a good thing. Is charity certainly a bad thing, Rowena? Oh, no, no, of, of course not. I was just curious. Sometimes uh, individuals will take those that are a little down on their luck and have them do jobs that they wouldn't have ordinarily preferred to do, but because they are so down on their luck, they will take what they can get and find themselves doing some unsavory things. I see, I see. That's a very pessimistic view of the world, but probably one that's met with a bit of accuracy. Well, I... I guess I, my question would be, these folk, the ones that I know, they are usually very sickly and emaciated. They don't eat much food or get much rest or have much training in the martial arts. So if one wanted to have you killed, it would be a particularly peculiar strategy to send those folk after you. Well, and, and the goblins were, I believe, by description, quite starving and ill um but they still took their task as it had been assigned to them apparently oh, wow. which did not bode well for them which well. is quite sad um i did wonder do you is his mother alive does she live here well i don't know for sure but i believe she, i believe they moved here together but i don't know that i've ever met the woman to be honest do you know her name? Oh, do I know her name? What was it? Arthur, do you know her name? And and he's like, well, uh, who, who, whose name? Whose name? And the, the one who's um, Gallimard's mother. And he's like, oh, it, um, Ragama, I think it was. Oh, that, well, there you go. He would know better uh, than I. I'm sorry. Uh, that was Rag Ragamar? Yes, it was Ragamar? Ragamar. Yes. Well, perhaps it's Ragamar. I'm not sure. I've never met the woman. It's possible well, she well, passed a few years ago, I think. I'm not oh, really sure. Oh, well, that's, that's quite... In, didn't you say... Damien, Damien, didn't you say that was the name? The, yeah, that that was what they were chanting while they tried to kill me. So I remember that one. Oh, dear. They were chanting Ragamar. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty memorable morning. Yeah. Huh. Well, that is very peculiar. Yeah, I agree. I'm sure there must be some sort of explanation for this, I would think. I don't but know that what is it why would we're be. Here. We are trying to find an explanation. Oh, well... I think Arthur and I have given you given you all we can. I don't know. I mean, if you want us to go speak, uh, Arthur, you can make your rounds oh, if you want. I can come in that direction. No, well, no, sweetie. Southeast is this way. And right. Damien's pointing west right now back to this hole. That'll take you back to this hole. Right. And Marina will uh, not take any soup from either of these, but she'll just drop a couple of coins with Olivia. Okay. Are you documenting those coins or are those flavor coins? Can they be flavor <laughs> coins? Oh, no. the option. No. They can be flavor coins. It can be flavor <laughs> coins. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's my job. first character backstory is going to bleed everybody dry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I know, right? <laughs> she's going to be, she's going to move away soon. You're yeah. going to see her like in the capital in like three books or something. Uh, <laughs> right. Jinzo, can you, you're the only one who hasn't really been <laughs> chatting too much. Can you, um, uh, can you give me a vigilant test? Yeah. Since you haven't really been actively engaging in the conversation. In return, pass. Okay. You noticed when the shout between Olivia and Arthur about Ragama went back and forth a couple times, you noticed that there were two or three people in here whose heads kind of shot up and they all kind of slinked out of the tent. Uh, but you can tell that they were like that, that, that name, that word being shouted across the tent caught their attention and they did their best to sort of just, follow the crowd and sort of disappear into the line that's coming in and out into the, out into the street somewhere. Uh, yes. Lotus Nesca. I believe we made ourselves known. 
Interesting. All right. Uh, uh, darlings, I think it's time for us to take a gander at uh, Gallimar. And the sooner might be the better, so he doesn't have as much time. Okay. Good eyes, Jinzo. Okay. So you bid your farewells to Olivia and Arthur, who wish you luck. Uh, and you get back out into the streets. Uh, and again, the streets here are not like the streets of Thistlehold. You're basically walking in mud uh, and dirt and puddles and filth. Uh, every now and then there might be like a few um, like a few planks of wood at like an intersection or something like that to help with some of the carts that are being pushed through. But for the most part, you guys are just getting like mud and, tr you know, everything's kind of on your on your boots, on your legs. Um, are you trying to actively look for the people who just ran out, uh, Jinzo, or are you just going to go vaguely to the southeast and ask around? I have a feeling that they just know that they've been a bit more alerted that we're here. They're going to report to somebody. So I think we just hurry over to, to the area. Okay. So we'll say then you move uh, southeast. Um, and that kind of takes you past the keep through the black square. Uh, you can see the blood robes, Demian, uh, that kind of eye you as you pass, as if one or two of them might recognize you a bit, eyebrow kind of raised. Uh, and they don't cause any trouble, but they're definitely looking at you as they pass. You can see through a series of tents, like some of the missionary stations and stuff like that, where, where Arthur, you know, sleeps and where some of his, some of the fellow Sarvola uh, followers congregate uh, when they're not rotating around the the tent city and doing good works um eventually you make your way down to the southeast you pass a handful of shops uh and all manner of people who i've been looking out at you with kind of hollow eyes uh and others who are like a few are holding out when they look at especially nazca uh, and they see she does have kind of an air of uh of superiority about her. Uh, and then Rowena wearing the Ordo robes and Demian with his, I mean, you might not be a Templar, but you're wearing gear that has the, uh, that is inherited in some ways. And some of it kind of has that kind of, uh, that kind of look to it. And so some folks will like kind of reach their hands out and step in front of you every now and then. They're like, please, can you, can you spare us a coin? We're so very hungry. You haven't eaten in days. Go do we? And like, they're just like right next to you, Damien. And it's not a whole lot different than out in the woods with you and Mad Jack. Where two or three people kind of come up to you and like kind of reach out and put a hand gingerly on your arm here. We're so very hungry. And the children we have back at home, back in the tent, they have, we give all the food, all the bread we're able to scrounge. We give to them just a few coins in the name of Prios, please, sir. Um, I've got Karn I Artist. Can I do an insight on this uh, plea mm -hmm. to Damien? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's a, It would be a Vigilant, unless you have something that changes it from Vigilant, but it would be Vigilant. I don't. It is still a Vigilant, um, but with Con Artist, you would let me know if I get a plus one bonus if they are being uh, lying, like uh, tricky about it. Okay. I'm trying to con um, Damien, essentially. Just roll roll a d20, and, and sure. we'll we'll see what the margin is, and then it'll determine um, whether or not. Because I feel like if I say you get it, that's, like that's fair. Giving, yeah, yeah. You know well, I, mean? I failed mm. terribly anyway. They're good. We're all good. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I failed so bad. Yep. I mean, it's going to be one of those days. Considering <laughs> your family background, all beggars look the same, right? So, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, they just they just look like they're trying to get money from him. They You don't see anything more Don't give them anything, Damien. They'll just keep coming back. I, I'm so sorry. Actually, oh, I gave the last no. of my food to a, a young goblin named Yard this morning. I, do you have, I'm really do you have a, a coin, perhaps? Just a, just a shilling or two, sir. Just a shilling or two. I don't know if I have any starting money or not. Damien, honestly, you, like, has a moment where he's like, I don't all? know if I have any money on me. And they kind of like, you can see their hey, face like, kind of starts to contort. Well, I guess you're just 
I have to spend so many, so many coins and all your fine things. I understand. I oh, understand. I, I mean, most of this is just because my dad died. Um, but when I do get some coin, I'll come back. I work with Arthur over no. there. We put together some soup, and I'll be glad to come no. back and try and help. I'll just have to donate more of my teeth to the tooth doctor to the north. Get a few coins to pay the pay the food for children. That's fine, sir. Oh my! Mm. Oh and he my. kind of grins, okay. and you can see like half his face is missing teeth. It's fine. You only need a few. I will definitely come back. Okay, and thank he, you for giving me a very important lesson. And he kind of looks at you, and he looks at the rest of you, and you can tell the one who's been doing the speaking, there's just disgust. And they start to trot away at that point, and you hear, like, some some foul word or two uh, kind of grumble under their, under their breasts as they move away. Okay. What well, would you guys fair. like to do? It's, as as you get to the southeast corner, hungry. yeah, they are very hungry. Uh, what do you do as you get oh. to sort of the southeast section? Like, how do you want to go about trying to locate this? It's again, it's very ramshackle, very spread out, lots of tents, some sagging lean tos. Very there's there's no like you don't really see any like wooden buildings here. Like all of it's all of it's temporary. Um, some are larger than others, but like you can certainly see that there's nothing here that would be permanent fixture. How do you want to go about trying to find them? So Romaine is not particularly good at these things, but I think while there was sort of all of this attention on uh, Sir Damien, she would look around to see if there seems to be anyone sort of like who seems to have been kind of following us here. Um, so that's what she would like to do kind of while that was happening. Okay. Give me a vigilant test. Yeah. That, uh... Uh, I'm going to take a plus one because I feel like we've got some audience okay. stuff. Uh, I like that you around, feel so I gonna... feel like I'm going to donate these flavor coins and I feel like we have some audience <laughs> bits. I found <laughs> my notes for audience science. bits and we do. <laughs> uh, okay, so I take a plus one. Like this just makes it an eight like i'm not particularly vigilant and i'm i failed at this 15 okay. over seven there are a lot of eyes eight. looking at you all uh you're not entirely sure how to negotiate or deduce exactly why uh but there are a lot of eyes some of them coming from people sitting down in the mud others peeking out from behind these canvas tents uh others just passing you uh in the in the road uh but there probably isn't a group of people that passes you or, or you pass that doesn't at some point look up at you. And all of their faces are hollow. You can tell like their eyes are just kind of almost distant, uh, emaciated. They all look very sickly. Some of them barefoot. Uh, they're all in threadbare clothing. Uh, if you know, and some are, are missing, you know, patches of it here and there. And you can tell others are injured. Like you can tell like, there are folks here who have clear wounds, like they're uh, a couple of are missing fingers. Uh, one, it looks like might be limping pretty poorly. Like all of them seem to be in, in kind of like what was described to you, like the folks who are in the need of, of the most help. And that de definitely seems like this neighborhood, like even up by the Grubbery and by the Black Square, you saw people who are functioning just fine. And you saw you saw some permanent places like especially around the square. There's the stone keep. There's a handful of these shops and things like that that are actually made from wood. And even at the grubbery people that were getting food, they still were probably workers coming back from maybe doing a shift at Thistlehold or something like that. But here, it's much worse than that. So, thoughts? I mean, just be incredibly direct. Well, or we can look for the person that isn't emancipated and wounded and is actually healthy, because I feel like this man will stand out in a way. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if there's if there's something more specific than that, we'll say that you just sort of wander around for a bit, just kind of keeping well, your eyes open. we're looking for red eyes. Mm -hmm. specifically as well but yeah okay. I, if it... okay 
That's All right. Fine. So uh, we'll say you spend maybe an hour wandering around this section of the neighborhood, up and down streets, down these little alleys. Uh, you get to these small little congregations of tents and you push by people. You try to look at them long enough before their eyes look away to see if any of them have red eyes. Some of them are bloodshot. You can tell some of them probably haven't slept or some of them have probably put whatever coins they have to drink, but none none are so red as to suggest that they would take on the nickname Red Eye. Uh, so pure, and you, and you never see anybody who looks very, very healthy. They all look in some ways very, very sickly. And I would say like over the time, you get the very distinct sense that they're all watching you like one after the other. Like they all like this weird little network of just one of them looks away and suddenly another one looks up. You walk down one alley as a few people are passing by. You hear like a whistle or two. And then suddenly a couple folks slip out of a tent nearby and just sit down out in the mud around you. And you do get the sense that you're kind of actively being watched, but yeah. no one no one here matches the description that you've gotten for, for Galamar. Well, it's disturbing. Any other ideas? Uh, this mine does not seem to have panned out. I'll simply go up to one of the mm. staring eyes. Excuse me, can you point me in the direction of Galamar's tent? You want to see Galimar? Yes, please. You. He looks you up and down. And he grins, and you can see there's like four teeth in his mouth. And he just points. And as you follow his finger, you notice that there is a tent slightly larger than some of the others. It's kind of at the center of this circular area. Uh, and there's one or two uh, tents that are like nestled up against it, but otherwise it's this, uh, it's a sort of uh, like a roundabout. And then there's a handful of other tents kind of looking in towards it and he just points at it. Don't know if he's home. Thanks. Okay. I'll drop a shilling in her direction. They watch it kind of fall to the ground. And as you're walking away, you feel and you look back and you see there's a shilling in the mud on the ground, the very shilling that you dropped into his feet. I'll pick it up. Okay. You guys want what to? it's worth, if you know him, uh, it seems like he thought that he might have trouble. And we're sorry to hear that. We are certainly not the source of that trouble. It sounds like he helps people and we don't want him to think that we're trouble for him. If anything, maybe we could be helpful. People who look like you. I just hope like that we're not you. taking the wrong way. People who look like you are usually trouble for people who look like us. I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And I would like to remedy that, if possible. Uh, Remember. What? I'm here to help. Uh, are you joying? Are you joying? Oh, I don't have it. I have no clue what's going on here. I just... I, it sounds like some people think that something bad is going on. And, uh... You know. Uh, but I have no clue. But it seemed like it would be nice to have a friendly chat instead of people, like, misunderstanding each other. <laughs> and then he's like waiting and then he just starts saying Ragama. mom yeah <laughs> oh if you see dart tell him I said hello and he'll vouch for me that I mean well <sighs> okay this is getting awkward. I'm going to go over there where you pointed out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just kind of leans back at this point and starts whistling a little bit, but it's really breathy because he has so few teeth. So it's super breathy. All right. Okay. Anyone else do anything or we just go over to the tent? Uh, Rowena, uh, 
and I, I'm just going to carry forward the fail, but she's trying to just like keep her eyes around as all of these conversations are happening. And she just sort of keeps feeling out of place, feeling sort of like all of this sort of just closing in. So, and I know I just failed, so I'm not expecting like a different outcome, but she's still kind of like looking all around and it's just faces everywhere. And yeah, it has that feeling. It does definitely has that feeling like whether it's true or not, it does have that feeling that everyone's just sort of watching and tracking your movements. Okay. When you head over towards the tent, it is, like I said, fairly, it's a little bit larger. It's not like grandiose and large. It's just a little bit taller. Uh, it's standing fairly crooked and there's otherwise squalor everywhere. There's a lot of uh, like patched canvas uh, that you can see it's sagging under the weight of what looks like grime. Uh, there is a threadbare curtain that is hanging limply over what you assume is the entrance to the tent, but it is flanked on either side by two scrawny looking figures, one of whom is a goblin, uh, the other of whom looks to be a woman that you would probably say in her 30s, but maybe the sickliness is pushing that age up a little bit more than it really is. Uh, and uh, they are just kind of slouched down uh, on either side of that. Um, it There's a very noticeable odor in the area. And more than once, you all are like having to like swipe bugs in such a way you hear a buzz or you know something stings you on the arm or whatever. Um, so it is it is not the most uh, palatable area. What would you like to do? This is, place is disgusting. Let's go quickly. And if Roy tube. just sort of like shushes Nazca a little bit. It's, 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 it's unkind. <laughs> she smells so bad. It just, you can see the flies coming off them, please. And she just like yeah. looks to Jinzo to yeah, yeah. like say something and like speak over Nazca. What do you say, Jinzo? Uh, I am Squire Jinzo and my lady Nazca here. Hailing from Thistlehold, would like to send a message to Garlemar. What do you this want to say? I'd like to say hello and have a conversation. That's okay. <sighs> what would you like to get Nazca will about? lean over to Jinzo. Uh, maybe say we're here to investigate the witch hunters or something like that. They seemed concerned about that. Witch hunters? Yes, oh. it's concerning the subject of witch hunters, which he is very concerned about. There were some people who seemed very worried about that. Oh, um, concerned. Uh, there was, somebody thought I was a witch hunter, and there was this very awkward moment of like a bunch of people trying to murder me, and we just really want to set that right uh, to make it clear we are not witch hunters. And uh, if you are having trouble, uh, maybe uh, instead of invoking violence, maybe we can offer assistance. Uh, you know, reach out for help instead of lash out. You know. Uh, he is sleeping. Oh, okay. We can wait. Well, how long we can... do you think he's no? How long do you think he's going to be asleep? He looks over, like the goblin looks over to like the, the woman who is just like biting on her fingernails and then swallowing them. You can go in. Great. Thanks so much. We're going in now. And Nazca just, will stride forward. And he pulls the curtain back. And yeah, you oh, go great. inside. Uh, is any, Who else goes inside? Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna thank you kindly. Uh, so inside, the ground is definitely drier, uh, not as muddy as what you were uh, what you were walking on. It's certainly not cleaner. Uh, it is fairly creaking. There are these crooked floorboards that you see have been uh, laid down. They're wavering with each step. They're not like you can tell they're just floating. They're not in, and like they're sagging as well. Um, there is a very sickly scent. Uh, of decay in here uh, and it is in no way uh, masked by what appears to be a, a large stick of incense or, or some other herb 
that is burning atop this tarnished, patinaed bra uh, brazier in the corner, uh, like something somebody would throw out. Um, you can see that there are these like crudely stitched uh, tapestries that are like swarms of hornets and such. And then there is also a fairly looking, a uh, fairly unstable looking table uh, underneath some of those tapestries uh, that looks to have like an assortment of bones. And there is a, in the, the, like on the other side of the tent from there. And it is very, like when all of you come in here, it is very crowded. Uh, there is a sleeping, uh, what looks like sleeping uh, furs and such. And you see there is a man uh, that is a, probably about five, eight, five, nine, not particularly tall, uh, not particularly healthy looking. Um, and you can tell his skin just from this distance is pale and pasty looking. What would you like to do? Well, I gotta say, and do we have a plan, by the way, for an escape when all this crowd gets uh, mob, mob, try to mobs us and we have to fight our way out? Oh, Hello? that won't happen. Positive thinking. We're gonna be oh, fine. Oh, we're so dead. All right, let's go. Rowena, no. you're forward. Uh, or Jinzo, you are also fairly uh, innocuous and not in a uniform. Of course, I'll see if he's awake. Do you go up to him? Yeah, I'll go up to him. Okay, you can tell quite quickly that he is not awake, uh, that he is in fact dead. Uh, as you can see that there appear to be uh, two very large wounds, uh, like, cause you can tell that they're these big wet spots, one on the chest and one on the side, uh, stab wounds or something like that. Maybe whatever had made them, whatever the punctures were have been removed. Uh, and you just see these big welts. Uh, he is extremely pale. You can tell he lost a lot of blood. Um, and when you, if you poke him or something like that, he's cool. So he's not like cold, uh, but he's also not warm. So he's kind of somewhere, uh, somewhere between. Uh, you don't, you're obviously not like a forensic pathologist or anything, but you've dealt with probably dead bodies before. Uh, and at least dead for several hours. Oh, uh, really? have you. If you may, he's deceased. Oh. Um, and when Jinzo says this, Rowena is sort of looking to that other individual to see if that seems like they knew that he... No, they didn't follow like, you did, in. Oh, they didn't come in with us. No, you guys are in here by yourselves. Do you can, get if, any of, if any of you are particularly tall... Uh, you you can call this out. You would probably be crouching a little bit. If you're not particularly tall, then you can stand up. Um, but it's not a, again, it's not a very, very huge tent, but there is enough room to like move around. You can tell he wasn't a very tall uh, man in life either. So he was probably able to move without it, like the draping of the canvas hitting his head. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, is there anything that I, I could ascertain additionally with like a Medicus test or was that kind of off just free sure, based on you can, kind of my um, Medicus knowledge? Well, I was giving that to Jinzo just from Jinzo looking at it because he's very okay. clearly those things. Uh, if you would like to make a test, um, yeah, like a what, cunning test since you have Medicus. If you want to yeah, try to cunning. get something more specific. Yeah. Um, let's see how I do with this. I'm trying to roll under 15 and I rolled a 14. So okay. yay. These look like, uh, these look like wounds from an arrow. Uh, both of them do. Uh, you would guess considering the temperature, uh, he it's evening time. The sun, when you guys came in here, the sun was going down. Like it was definitely on the horizon. He's pro you would guess he probably died today. Uh, Sir, uh, and she's looking to Damien, uh, uh, at the arrow, arrow mm -hmm. wounds, which this, he, he wasn't who attacked you earlier, right? Uh, I, there were people that were shooting arrows at us, but I kind of had a lot of people like <laughs> almost literally crawling on top of me. It was a little hard to see the tree line. Um, Magic did shoot I'm pretty sure Magic shot one person and then somebody else got away 
I thought that was a lady. I think it was a lady. I was, again, it was really awkward. Like there were people like literally climbing on me. I'm I'm really sorry. Oh dear. Oh um. Hmm. Oh, do you think? Oh. Hmm. Yes. Well. Uh, hmm. Uh, one moment. God uh, bless it. Oh boy. Yes, keep oboying at each other for a second here. Um, Nazca's going to stick her head out of the tent and look at the two guards. Uh, who else was in here today other than uh, uh, Galamar and us? Others brought yes. him back and laid him for his sleep. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. Pops back in. I, I actually believe our dear friend Magic might have been the shooter. Why do you say that? They Wait. brought him back? Magic killed someone, didn't he? Yeah, th- there were two shooters. One in the morning down. this morning? Yeah. Uh, can uh, can you? What a terrible day! Uh, you're keeping an eye out, right? And oh, is, you're you're keeping an eye out. Yes. Um, eh, Jinzo, are you good at that? You seem very good at that. I can keep an eye out. No. Jinzo and Nazca, roll resolute tests, please. Oh no! All right. I mean, anyone is better than Reyna at like, keeping an eye on it. Uh, it's actually not terrible at it. I think oh you wouldn't be. All right, I have a seven in vigilant. I am always the worst at keeping an eye out. Okay. Well, well. okay, you guys. So Nazca and Jinzo, you hear like the buzzing that you heard. And then you realize like, as you look down, it's not flies. But on each of like, we'll say Nazca, maybe on your arm and Jinzo, you feel it maybe on your neck. And there is a large hornet. And Nazca, you get it as it's right as it stings. You feel the sting begin. You smash it. Uh, but Jinzo, you don't quite get it in time. Jinzo, take one point of temporary corruption as you feel this sudden nausea. Like it's just instant begins to happen. You also feel the floorboards are kind of moving. And you realize as you look down, a few of them have been dragged out from underneath the tent. And you see that there is now like this hole uh, on the ground that is beginning to be revealed as each of these floorboards are getting pulled out from under the tent by whoever might be outside. What you guys like right. to do? Uh, let's get out of here. No? Huh? Okay. Jinzo, are you all right? Yes, something stung me, but the floor is moving. Yeah, it nearly stung me as well. You see this dead wasp here? This is what got you. Uh, let's get out of here. This oh, is. I hate just... wasps. Yes. Uh, this also... wafting rancidness just comes up from below, and you can oh, see this swarm of hornets comes up from the shadows and begins kind of hurling around. And not only that, but you can you can see that that whatever hole is underneath here is quite deep to the point where you can't really see anything. You see all these like these claws and vines and things that are kind of uh, but you can see and hear something shifting and moving. And all of you can also hear Ragama, Ragama, Ragama. This is why I wanted an escape route from outside. I need all of you to go ahead mm-hmm. and roll a quick test as these boards oh, are being pulled to see if any of you are managed. And I'll say a minus two, in fact, uh, to see if any of you can kind of keep your footing as these these boards are just being yanked out from underneath you. I think we got a bunch of bonuses from yes, the audience. Did. So I'm Griff, going to take, yeah. how many are we allowed to take? We're going to take a left up to two? One. One <laughs> up to two? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the rules, I mean, but I'm gonna say one. I think All it's right. just one, because like we still, because right. it's, it's still a negative. Like it, it should still be a negative. You. I will, I will, I will take and you and your 14 quick. I'm so jelly. <laughs> yeah, I've got I five can't. quick. Wow, I've got, I'm rolling under six. Quick. I rolled wow. one though. This honestly wow. sort of makes sense. Three. 
It makes sense, Jinzo. You just got bit. You're feeling suddenly nauseous and probably a little woozy. And as you all are kind of scrambling and this swarm comes up and begins like kind of harassing your hair, your clothes, getting underneath the flaps of all your of all your belongings, you guys watch as Jinjo just just loses his balance and falls down. You hear the the like the the crushing of vines, like a twig or two, and then uh, as Jinzo, you have fallen into this pit. It is dark. Ah. You cannot see, you reach out and you can feel the wall right next to you. It is very slick, but but also jagged. You can see the light up above where maybe 15 feet you fell. Uh, we'll say take a point of damage from the fall. You can see you can see the light from the like whoever might have a, a lantern or if there's just a, a you know of the brazier uh, if that's it there's a little bit up there where you can see the rest of your 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 squad but you also hear <laughs> come to me my sweet and when you turn and you oh. look at where this is coming from, you see that there is a figure, or at least the contours of a figure. You can get a little of the light itself. She is a swelling, like a swole, bloated figure where her eyes have been so swollen from, you're not sure if it's like some sort of reaction or hornet stings or something that you can barely see her eyes. She seems almost 300 pounds, but you're pretty sure that's not from just pure muscle, but it's just the swelling of the body. You can't even see legs really as the arms like reach out and start crawling across the ground towards you. You also realize that you've fallen onto what appears to be a bed of bones. We're going to go into initiative now and then go from there. Okay. Well, who is it? Who are you? Ragama. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead and throw Ragama up there really fast. Okay. Well, you had other character ideas too, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I heard there's a really successful dentist nearby. I hear there's a great uh, thief option Hi. coming up. I'm starting with five of ten uh, max uh, toughness because we haven't like rested or anything. Yep. So. Oh, that's rough. Don't yeah, get that's, close. Uh, that's pretty oh, tough, right dear. there. Okay, go ahead. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. Uh, we're gonna start an initiative. Um, I don't want to put Mad Jack's character at risk while he's not here. So let's say, um, I don't know, maybe, ah, oh, geez. Maybe he was patrolling to make sure, or uh, who knows. He got yeah. distracted by Atolia's mom and helping her out because he's a bleeding heart. I like it. That's good. We'll mm. say, well, he, he stayed behind to help her, uh, and he wanted to hear more about these 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 harassers or something while you mm -hmm. guys checked it out. And he specifically said to come get him. If something is up. So True. there you go. Okay. <laughs> That's the case then. Sir Damien, it is your turn. The floorboards are being dragged outside. Uh, and you can see that whoever is out, and they're coming from both sides of the tent. One of them's getting pulled to the north, one of them's getting pulled to the south. And like sometimes, like they are pulling really quickly, and you it, to to, the, to your shock because some of you are standing on top of them. But each time, it's like making the this pit, this hole, this entrance of the bit bigger and bigger and bigger. The hornets are swarming around in this tent. There's nothing but darkness 15 feet down. You can barely see the glint of Jinzo's armor and weapons from the brazier uh, that is actually somewhat obscured by that swarm of hornets. So Damien, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Oh, goodness. See, you said he's like 15 feet down. That's way past. Yeah, I think 15 reach. feet sounds fun to me. Deep okay. enough to be a problem, but not so deep that it's impossible. Do do we also see what was down there? Or is that no. something that only no okay. you wouldn't be able to see it? No. Uh, I think that his first instinct is to try and like, you know, he's he's armored, he's light on his feet, but he's still somewhat heavy with the armor. It's like 
try to lay his body weight down on the board somewhat and like reach an arm down for Jinzo to be able to grab. Okay. His hope being that he can help pull Jinzo up. Okay. So you lay down, you're reaching down into the pit. You can see that the pit has all sorts of these vines. Uh, they're not hard to like push away or anything like that and mm -hmm. roots and such. And you can also see some torn threadbare, which you think might be clothing. Like you can see like this, this soiled reddish looking uh, like pair of, of pants that is like torn apart. You can see what looks like a jerkin that's caught up in some of these rags and hanging from it. You can see these these hairs that have been wrenched and ripped free uh, and you're just sort of trying to sweep through it just to get your hand down there so that it can can help Jinzo up. So. Uh, we'll say if the time, if if the situation allows itself, uh, we might say that uh, that he gets uh, he gets your help. Okay, sound good. I mean, Damien's done, but he's not immediately just going to jump into a fifteen foot hole. I mean, that sounds like something Jeremy would do. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I would argue that that's probably exactly what Damien would do. <laughs> well, his first thought is to try and help this like help this guy out. Oh, totally. You know, if he, and I think. Rowena, when it gets there, would kind of indicate that like she has like a quarter staff, and so maybe between the two of us, with like the length okay. of her quarter staff, that like that would kind of be the combo that would be coming. So All right, smart. if we're metagaming a little bit, I do have climbing equipment. A I little. did plan on slamming in a grappling hook to the ground and throwing a rope down there, but I probably do not have the strength to hold it. Okay, we're in initiative. I just want to <laughs> remind everybody yeah. how that works. That everyone has turned. Like everyone was talking. Sir Damien, are you done? Yeah, I mean that's what okay. you try and do. All right, so you reach down, it's best, and you're just trying to hold your arm out. We'll say your arm maybe Jinzo, gets down. I can't see you. Reach up. That might sh that that might that might shrink the distance he has to climb by like maybe four or five feet or so. Okay, Jinzo, it is your turn. You're laying on the ground. You just fell. You got bones around you, and there is this there is this mass of a woman <laughs> who is crawling towards you. As she gets closer, you can see she has pustules and boils all over her body, no clothing that you can tell. And every time she takes a little, dra you know, she drags a little bit closer to you, you see one of those pustules, one of those boils erupt. And from it, a dozen hornets fly out and begin oh. swirling around. You can see dripping from her mouth and from her fingers is some kind of bile or acid. Is what would you like to do? It's Ragama. She's down here. I look up to the hole that I fell down, try to grasp at the walls for any sort of. Rip. We're sorry about your son. <laughs> Okay, so first you need to stand up from prone. So we'll it. say I can acrobatics prone. free action. Just go ahead. Me. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And so you stand up. Do you have to make your do you have to make your quick test? Double check. Yeah, it's a quick test. I think it's a quick test. Yeah. So go ahead and roll that to see if you can like flip back up as you do so. Oh my god, it's a two. Okay, so uh, as you flip back up, you get your footing. You want to start climbing. I will tell you this that you're going to be climbing uh, and she is, you are within her pit. She will get a free attack as you start to climb. Are you okay with this? I'll disengage as a movement and then maybe climb as, as the combat. That sounds good. Okay, so you disengage. Okay. Uh, well, actually, wait, hang on. Uh, let me double check something. So... So you stand I think from you still Yeah, I still think... Yeah, I still yeah there's like I a talent you have to have. Yeah, there's no disengage uh, by default. Yeah, okay. Okay. Maybe it's acrobatics right. or something. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. I think it is acrobatics uh, if you get like a higher level of it. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll defense against her. Um, she's going to take up. She's basically going to. It's going to be a minus three. So roll your defense at minus three as she lunges out at you. It's a protection of three. Okay. So you, uh, as you start to climb, uh, you, you're slipping here and there and you feel this sudden piercing on your ankle and your calf and it's, the pain is excruciating because it's not just the piercing, but then it begins to burn. 
burn as this acid, this bile from her mouth begins to seep into your wounds. Uh, so you are going to take, uh, so you are going to take, um, hang on. So you said three for your defense? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be three points of damage from the bite, uh, but the acid attack is going to continue to do damage to you uh, over the course of the next um, over the next couple uh, couple of minutes or so, uh, unless okay. it's removed, so you can wipe it off. But it takes like an action or something like that. But it will be it will it would basically be like a dot unless it's unless it's wiped off. Okay. Uh, you wrench your leg free, uh, and you begin to climb. Give me a climb test. The walls are slick, so give me a quick minus two to try to climb these walls. And let me know how you do. I don't have the rules up. So that's okay. So you very definitely wow. like motivated by this thing biting you in the leg. Uh, you begin to climb up the sides. Um, and trying to remember how far you can actually go. Uh, I will say because Damien is, is there, we'll say you can end your turn reaching up and grabbing his arm. So the two of you are basically, you're gripping each other. Uh, but he's not yet pulled up out of the pit. Does that sound good? I'm here, Damien. Please help me out. Okay. Okay. Oh, you look bad. She's got my leg. Okay. Uh, all right. Then it's her turn. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, tug of war. Tug of war. <laughs> Dude, that would be. Hey, we just pull him apart. Just rip them apart. Oh, spill God. everywhere. <laughs> like a I wishbone. Mean, no. Just like <laughs> make the wish. Uh, okay. She's no, she's not gonna do that. She is going to um She's going to task uh, she's going to cast a spell, in fact, that all of us oh. know so well. Um, uh, as you oh. see the various Roots and thorns in the sides in the grounds of this pit begin to animate and start to wrap themselves around Jinzo. And I'm using my own spells. I know, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and because she is at adept, this can actually chain to Damien. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. So, all right. I need to roll a. Oh yeah, that spell gets mean. It does. I only have a dev. I don't have master, but um, it's still pretty good. Uh, so go ahead yeah. and Jinzo, give me a strong test. Hang on. Oh, I have to roll a resolute test to, ta to cast it, and then you have to to move it. Um, mm. Would you all hate if I just roll dice? Do you care? Like I know we're not supposed to, but can I just? That's okay. Go I just roll it. You it. Right. roll dice. It just moves <laughs> faster. Like at the just, dark side. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, so I rolled a ten. I needed a. I needed a basically a fifteen or under to to pass. So yeah. So these these vines come out and they wrap around Jinzo. Uh, so Jinzo, you are entangled in them. Uh, kind of, and like you can feel yourself not f like even if you get the sense that if, if Damien let you go, you probably wouldn't fall as these vines would kind of cradle you and sort of bring you to the ground to some degree. But you can tell that you are kind of caught up in this web. Um, and you hear her just, you, you hear her just call out, No, come back. I'm so hungry. <laughs> uh, and then I'll, uh, that'll be her turn. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, moving it back. Uh, it is Ruena's turn. What would you like to do? So, um, uh, sorry, Jinzo, did you successfully crawl out? He's hanging quick... up in the air, wrapped in these vines. He's got, Damien does have his hand, but you can tell Jinzo is now caught effectively in like a spider web, so to speak. Does that look like about Rieta? Help me, please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> he's in a lot of trouble, too, because he's low on health, and he's going to take some acid damage. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, so Rowena has a dagger. Would Rowena be able to reach with her dagger to be able to cut at these vines 
Um, yeah. Or are they too far down below him to be able to? I would want a quick test out. from you to keep your balance as you swipe at them, because it's not an issue of hitting them. You would hit them. It's just a question if you can, because these these like there are people actively trying to pull the rest of the boards out to get you all the yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. And so you're swiping at it. Uh, so it's just can you keep your balance? So we'll say a quick. Um, you can roll it flat since if you're if you're landing prone next to Damien, I'll say you can roll it flat. Okay, uh, and you're not a big you're heavy to... dude with a ton of ton of armor. We have a generous audience, so if it's okay, I'm going to take a. a are they boost. generous? I don't see they any complications. Generous. Where are my complications? <laughs> uh, no, they're very uh, generous. Looking for I think complications. They're the best audience. Looking no, for complications. No, 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 no complications. <laughs> it's the, it's the um, best audience. No complications. I'm really under though. eight, so hmm. this is, you know, helping me a little bit here. Um, come on, come on. Oh, that's an 18 over eight. Uh, okay. Damn. I'm trying, Jinso. I'm trying. Just hold, hold. Yeah. You swing down and you lose your balance and you tumble forward over the plank and you find yourself caught. You find yourself much like Jinzo caught up in these vines. Uh, okay. Okay. So I want to go right. back and check something really fast uh, on this entangling vine oh, to boy. see if something has to happen. So if the, so if the mystic tried. manages to ensnare um, a target with a successful resolute test, then he or she can attempt to snare another one, and so on until an attempt fails. So let me go back just to see if it snared Demian. Mm. Uh, I, okay. Uh, it's Denso, a six. I'm in a so better place to try to cut these now. The vines have, grow, uh, have started to wrap around you, Damien. And then to okay. uh, to Rowena. So Rowena, yes. And then finally to Nazca. Nazca, you're okay. That's a 17. So Nazca, you're the only one not hey. caught up in vines. Oh, Jeff, you got a complication. <laughs> thank you very much, Jim. All right. No, thank you. We <laughs> roll poorly enough. Right there. We don't need complications. A second <laughs> ragama suddenly appears. No. Yeah. Like, hey, what's Yay. up, guys? All right. Uh, so, Rowena, you have, unfortunately, as you lean down to cut some of these, you lose your balance and you tumble and you don't fall all the way to the ground because the, the entangling vines have become so, uh, they have essentially covered the area and so they kind of protect you from falling in a weird way, but you are also now yourself tangled up in them. Uh, the good news is, is that, like, you are high enough that she can't bite you, but you are very much caught in her, in her vines. Uh, and it's assuming she can't find a way up. Uh, Nazca, it is your turn. Okay, so right now outside, the people are still pulling the planks to make the hole larger. Every turn, you you definitely see them trying to pull. Like you see the boards, you don't see outside, mm -hmm. but you see the boards. Okay, okay. No, I'm going to do the worst idea. Um, I could hear that she said, "I'm so hungry." Right? Yeah. Great. I'm going to run over to um, Red Eyes, uh, and I'm going to push his body down the hole to feed her with. I love it. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. give me give me a strong test just to do this quickly, uh, just to make sure it doesn't like. Just just give me a strong test. I'll say uh, he's he's sickly and vagrant, so he's probably not that big. So take like a plus three. Uh, he is nice. he is very much a waif. Uh, he doesn't have any armor or anything on like that. So it's just kind of, can you do this fast enough? I can. Okay. So you roll over and the body falls down. It bumps a little bit off of like Rowena and Jinzo. You can kind of feel the weight shift a little bit. And the body also gets tangled a little bit up in the vines too. So there's now three bodies that are hanging in these growing magical vines. Uh, and then Damien yeah. have a couple wrapped around you as well. Okay. okay. And then I, I can't draw weapons because it's a quick action or something still. And I've done movement and an action of sorts. I am perfectly fine with saying one act because everything's very tight quarters. I'm fine yeah. with saying one action was to roll it over and then you can draw your weapons. That's fine. Okay. Great. Okay. I will do. Sir Damien, it is your action. Okay. Stop of the round before you go. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to double check something or not double check something. It's There's another make the whole bigger effect. Uh, all right, Nazca oh and Rowena, go ahead and make a resolve dear. test. Oh, lovely. I really wanted to do You're this You're getting again. bit by hornets. There's a swarm I of hornets. I am. Uh, oh, Melissa, oh. can I grab one uh -huh. more plus one from the audience? Thanks. Yep. Got it. Much obliged. I am good again. Okay. 
both of you are good again. As you are uh, getting yeah. bit, you can feel these hornets begin to bite here and there, and they sting, but you don't have the kind of effect that I described to Jinzo yet, where Jinzo I is sort of like swarming. bugs. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm-mm. Bugs that carry corruption or even worse. <clears throat> uh, all right. Sir Damien, what would you like to do? So I assume I need to do a strong check to break out of these. So uh, let me pull up Entangling Vines again. Um, It's resolute. uh, The caster's resolute against his strong. Yeah, it's not like it's not like um, it's not like Magic's ability where when you try when the person who's in snare tries to move, that's when it happens. So it is until the mystic fails a resolute slash strong test starting the following turn. So I think, uh, I don't know if it's not worded the way it is with, with, uh, with Aaron's where it's like when you try to move, uh, but okay. I'm fine to do it that way. Cause I think it makes more sense. So I, I'm fine to roll the resolute test on her, on, on your turn instead of hers. If you want to do that. So give me a strong test, Damien. Okay. M- uh, minus five. Minus five. Okay. Yeah, she has very good resolute. All right. Well, fortunately, I get to try twice thanks to Steadfast. Not a boy. Nice. You got this. You don't need to try okay. twice. Okay. No, well, you know, it was there. So you managed to rip and wrench free, and you feel some of the vines still try to cling to you, but you're able to cast them aside and just the strength uh, uh, and the breadth of your like your chest and your arms are able to just push them off and you feel movement like you, you can you're flexible enough to move. you're still laying prone on the floor, but you've managed to, to get uh, the vines untangled. Uh, okay. What would you like to do? Well, you know, I'm not the sharpest man in the world, but I know Jinzo and Reina were already looking rough and like now they're even pulled down. So Clearly, the smart thing to do is the dumb thing, and that's jump down into the pit. Oh, 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 oh. okay, you are going to do it. Because okay. I'm a much better target than them. I okay. should let her eat me. Okay. So, all right. So, I'll say, are you trying to land next to her? Are you trying to, like, dodge the vines and everything? As best as possible. Okay. So you... it's, I, I don't think he's like a think it like real tactically kind of guy. He he sees the situation in general. You hop okay. in. Just give me a quick test to see if you keep your footing. Okay. So like if if you oh, land on feet, I can imagine you fall falling prone. next to her. Okay. Oh, it's a, not a it's not a particularly large pit in terms of width. It's yeah. just very deep. So like that's why Jinzo yeah. had to take a free attack because essentially anywhere down here is going to be next to her. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> you fall prone. <laughs> I mean, he was like laying on his belly and it's it's not really a coordinated jump. It's more of like you kind of continue sliding forward after breaking off the vines and like, oh, (laughs) this is great. You fall prone. Take a point of damage from the fall. You fall prone. Okay. Right next to her. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Uh, so then we come to Jinzo's turn. Jinzo, let me see about this acid attack, whether it trigger, whether it ticks on your turn or mine. While you're doing that, we've had two raids uh, here recently. So welcome in raiders from Matt and a Hat and welcome in raiders from Demon X. Oh, thank you. Good to see you all again. Uh, Okay, so... Bassin must first penetrate target's armor. It did deal damage. Okay. Um, I don't think it says specifically when it ticks. I'm going to say it's going to tick on her turn. So you won't take... So you'll get an action here before the, the acid ticks, we'll say. Okay. Uh, what I, I still allowed to have like free movement in the vines. Uh, so you would need to. We're gonna. We would do what we just did with Demian. Is that you'd have to roll a strong test to try to like get control and maybe climb up them or climb down them or whatever it might be. But you would you would need to roll a strong test to do so. Okay. Hmm. I can't do anything it else is. while binded. It's like complete binding sort of deal. So uh, you can use okay. ranged attacks, and you can kind of, you, you, but you're stuck to the wall, like halfway up that yeah. hole. If you have any ranged yeah. weapons or powers, you can still use them, okay. um, but you can't move unless you pass your strong test against its against her resolute. Uh, is effectively okay. how that'll work. 
then I'll have to force myself out as best I can. Okay, man. We have audience bits because we do have a generous audience. Uh, some, John, Maxuda, are more generous than others. your action to remove the acid. That is true. That's what I was you wondering could. because if I'm, I'm allowed to do anything else. I'm fine with that. Way. Like, okay. you're you're committing an action to it. I'm okay with it. Then I'll do my best to, like, rub my leg against the wall, against the vines to get rid of the acid. Okay. So, let me make sure. <laughs> like I think it, it, is, a, it, it is a test, though. Um, okay. It is a cutting test to do so, to make sure you get it all off. Oh, God. My seven <laughs> cunning. Did I just build the perfect encounter to kill Jinzo? Yeah, this is, is terrible for me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to. One? I really didn't. Oh, goodness. I'll take a plus one, sure. Oh, okay. come on. You got this. Come on. Yeah, that's a good roll. Okay. Nice. Nice. Hey. You do manage to get the the bits of the acid that were still burning away at their skin, maybe a some of the vine, maybe some of the wall, like you said. Maybe there's all these different tattered bits of cloth of probably people like yourself who got trapped in this. Uh, maybe you you're able to rub your leg against that, and that'll that'll free you. Uh, you're still stuck though in the vines. I'm gonna say you you used your sort of whatever you could focus on to to, to try to do this. Is that okay with you? You you, you yeah, okay with it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go to her turn then, um, and she now has eyes for someone new. As Damien, you are in in the pit with her um, <laughs> as you land you look up and you see this massive swollen body coming towards you it basically looks like a blister has grown a head her face her mouth is huge and disjointed you see a few teeth are left but mostly it just it looks like it's like the jaw is un unhinging like a snake <laughs> and as it does you can see behind what looks like human teeth are actually rows of very sharp teeth that are dripping some sort of acidic bile. Uh, and she looks at you with her giant swollen shut eyes and she's going to bite you. You're here. Uh, yeah, you're okay. prone. Yep. So hang on one second. Let me just double check before you roll. Because uh, I think it's a disadvantage or something. She does. I just rem I just I'm just trying to remember because it's flat for NPCs. I think it's a two. I think it's a. Mm -hmm. I think it's minus two to your test. So, uh, so it's gonna be. So roll your defense mm -hmm. minus five total. So that's taking okay. into account her ability plus the. Um, All right. Plus the advantage. Oh boy. Okay. You got this. You got this. Right on the dot. Is she? Nope, 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 nope. Crunches into your leg, but you do have like a grieve that do, that protects not just from the pierce, but also from the acid. The acid is still slathered on your armor, but it's not down into your skin. Uh, but you feel the crunch come down and she starts shaking it around. And her arms wrap around you, these long fingers, sausage length and, 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 and width as they kind of wrap around you. You can't even feel bone in them anymore as she's trying to kind of grasp onto you. Um, I think that's basically all she can do. Uh, and that'll be the end of her turn. So you're okay. Rowena. Uh, you have fallen into these in these entangled vines. You are also entangled like Jinzo, except you do not have any acid on you. What do you want to do? Okay. Um, and this was a... What was it going to take for me to be able to get out of this? Strong. <laughs> against her resolute. <laughs> okay. Um, that is it. what I would like to try She still casts spells. Oh, that's I, right. <laughs> you don't have any. No, like I could, I could attempt to like throw my daggers. About the only uh, thing that I'd be able to do. Yeah, range attacks fine. Um, I am gonna take an audience extra for my strong, so that I'm trying to roll under nine because Romina is tall and scrawny and not strong. No, that's an 11 over 9. Okay. Unfortunately, you're not able to get out from the tangle of the vines. Uh, okay. Is there anything else that you would want to do? Anything small that you would want to do with your turn? 
she's probably like yelling up to Nazca, like, uh, uh, Nazca, what, yes. what, what, are, you, what are you doing up there? Because three of us are down here. So she's hoping for some rescue plan that is being brilliantly devised by Nazca from uh, up top. Clearly not jumping down there like everyone else. Which, I just, you think? Uh, help. I have help. climbing gear. Give me a moment. I, I don't have a moment. <laughs> okay, I'm... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think Damien shouted like cannonball as he like leapt in. Like, hey, I, I put a body down there to feed her. You did. Uh, she seems to like the livings There's... a little bit better. Oh, that's too bad. Fresh meat. Uh, Nazca, it is your oh, turn, though. Before we move on, uh, on, welcome Raiders. Blue Cottage D&D. Thank you very much. Oh, awesome. What's up? Thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm about to, uh, I think I might about to, I might, might kill a few people here. Uh, not intentionally. I'm not going to feel good about it uh, on air afterwards. A lot. I am. Uh, with a giant swollen uh, woman. This is the second bloated swollen woman that's been haunting long, I think. This happens in our Delta Green game too. Remember that? Oh god, it's falling. That was back. actually <laughs> yeah, that was actually the bloated woman where if anybody knows anything about like Lovecraftian lore, you would know that reference. Mm. Uh, okay. So Long doesn't. Long doesn't know what it was that's haunting his dreams. Uh chat did mention too old to remember uh Moist Marge is uh here too. <laughs> <laughs> Moist Marge. <laughs> <That's> so good. <laughs> All right, Nazca, your turn. Your, I don't know if I want to call them friends, but your party members are all stuck in this pit. What do you want to do? Well, my plan changed and then changed again and then changed some more. I think getting them out and having an exit plan is great at this moment. Um, so I do actually have the climbing gear equipment, actually. Can I, I presume it's, it doesn't actually, I tried to look, it's, there's no list of what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Grappling hook and rope, reasonable? Just fine. Makes sense to cool. me. Cool. Can I get the spiky part of the grappling hook into what is the now exposed soft dirt pulled back from the planks? That sound, yeah, I think all that sounds good. Yeah, I'm And then right throw that. sort of the rope down so that people have a way of climbing back up. Yeah, so what, what I'll with say support. is with this action, yep. as long as someone is not entangled by the vines, yep. no climb check to get up. They can just climb up. That's and what I'll say. Rowena, you're tangled at the bottom. You're still the only ones tangled by the vines, You were, but you're way at the bottom. Um, well, Rain and Ginzer are both like, they're they're somewhat up higher. Like Damien is so heavy and he basically jumped for the idea of like landing at the bottom. So I am giving him that. Sure. Um so that's how he made it to the bottom. Rowan engines are like caught up in the air, so to speak. Okay, so then all right. I will. I do have. Uh, I have my fencing sword and parrying dagger. I guess I'm going to try to attack some of the vines so that they have advantage on their strength checks to get out of it. I would say getting all of like the time it would take you to get your climbing gear out, Next jam time. it into yeah. the ground and toss the rope down probably takes up what would have been your attack action effectively. Okay. But cool. yeah. Okay. I have the rope. You just need to get out of the vines to get up. I will Easier help you done. next. But thank you. Yep. I will help mm -hmm. you in about mm -hmm. six seconds in theory. Yeah. Rowena. And Damien, go ahead and roll your uh, resolute tests. Uh, I can't remember if I said this had a penalty or not. Where is it? These are, the, these are the hornets again. Resolute minus two. I'm not sure if I said that last time, but resolute minus two. I think you did because I made it a minus one with our generous audience. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you, generous audience. Roll under. Okay. Uh, how d and then Damien's the other. How did Damien do? Did he pass? I don't think oh, Damien rolled yet. Yeah. Resolute, Basically, two uh, people are getting bit by hornets two. at the top of every turn. Okay. So for resolute, I do any minuses. Minus two. Two. Minus two. Okay. Unless you want an audience to make it a minus one. No, nah, it's okay. So fortunately, I get two tries on this. All it is is corruption. That's so a nice first try. Uh, ability that you got there. Yeah, I took the second tier, but oh so I'll God. try again. Okay. And also, I've got a thing that lets me roll my persuasive instead of resolute. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Okay. All right. Ah, so going with like that steadfast ability. This you really guys nice. are definitely getting bit, but so far, none of the ones that have been biting you all have put that kind of poison, that venom, whatever it is, that caused such like corruptive queasiness that took over Junzo. So none of you have gotten the temp corruption that they carry. Uh, top of the round, Sir Damien, your turn. You're down here. You okay. just got bit in the leg. Armor held. Yeah. What do you want to do? I'm assuming basically trying to get to my feet and get like sword and shield and have be the majority of my turn okay if you so didn't have it drawn nice. ahead of time then yeah i would say so yeah. which i guess you wouldn't have because yeah i had, didn't because i was trying to grab yeah. jinza so i think in fairness like i assume it's an action to try and get up and another to like get yeah. stuff in hand i think so yeah okay. so standing up um from pone caught so so standing up from pro normally costs a whole turn or one mm. movement action if the character succeeds at a quick test so you would technically need to do a quick test to get up. Um, okay. And then I'm making sure that getting up from prone is not something that would give her a free attack. I don't see it. So if I'm okay. wrong, let me know in the comments and we will remake yeah, this episode. I don't episode. see it either. Okay. So make a <laughs> quick test then. Okay. Okay, made it. So okay, then it's so just one movement action. So then, with your and then with your second, that's when you can draw your okay. stuff. Okay. Okay. So we'll say you got I mean, your shield, your sword, all that kind of shit ready. From there, I'll basically like it's not an attack, but I'll declare her my target, so to speak, for the leadership ability. Am I am terribly sorry for how we've come to this point, but at this point, the best I can offer is that Taylor offers you the grace and death that you clearly have not received in life. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can actually do the leadership thing as an active action. So oh, it takes require, an actual action. Yeah, because I've had happens. that in some of my MP. No, you're good. New, new, new character. But do you still have a second movement if you wanted to? Because mm -mm. the quick one to get one up, movement to stand up. One to yeah. get up, one to draw his weapon. And then another to get my stuff out. Oh, the weapon, the weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Jinzo, you're not burning from acid, but you still are stuck in these vines. You can see that Damien, the brave fool that he is, has left into the pit for danger. You see this dangling rope come down from Nazca, who's up above trying to help you all up. You see Rowena is relatively close to you, also tangled up in these vines. Jinzo, what do you want to do? The only thing I can do at the moment is try to wriggle free of these vines. Okay, man. Uh, so give Just me... Straight strong. Uh, yeah, give me a strong test. Uh, it's modified by her resolute which would be five that's a minus five yeah buddy <laughs> oh wait. yeah you gotta would roll. you like a plus one yeah you gotta no nah, it's okay you got this you should have taken the plus one <laughs> you should have if you took the plus one you would have passed I I failed. Failed. take it take it's it it's too late that's too late it's too late yeah. If you would have taken it, you would have passed. You rolled a six. You needed a five, and you rolled a six. That's what you get. That's what you get for disrespecting the audience, Jinzo. You are still stuck in the vines. <laughs> Anything else you want to try to do while you're stuck in here? Mm, can I do it again? A second time? Uh, sure. This is, I'll say this is just purely to break free, not to necessarily like, um, move. It's just sort of the rip some of them off you, but yes, you can. That's fine. Both actions effectively. <laughs> You're such <laughs> a stubborn <laughs> son of a bitch. You didn't take it. Hey, you passed this time, but you didn't deserve to pass. So you've managed to <laughs> wrench some of these roots and vines free you realize they're not wrapped around you anymore you're, you're still like kind of clinging to them so you don't fall uh but they're no longer like wrapped and gripping you and in in like a uh and then you're able to uh to kind of hang there it is raga -ma. it's her turn uh she's got one target down here um that's that's living and active uh yes there's another body down here that she would have probably eaten but there is an active one down here. So she's going to bite down once more on Damien. Uh, no longer prone. So she's not going to get her advantage. So this is just going to be a straight minus three to your defense roll. Okay. Minus three. 
Okay. Okay. You are the perfect person to be down here tanking up all these. You can tell she's getting extraordinarily frustrated. Uh, and you can hear the clang of her teeth against your armor. And that is. That's going to be her turn. Um, I don't, there's nearly nothing else that she can do. Okay. That'll do. Okay. Um, Rowena, it is your turn. Uh, so. I'm trying to think role wise here. If I were to throw a dagger, that would be. Um, ba, 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 accurate, maybe. I think. Uh, sure. Well, that works for me. So I could potentially be trying to roll under 11, which okay. feels like better odds than other things that I've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, would I be able to throw a dagger? So, Damien, you just got out of being wrapped in the vines? Mm -hmm. He's, no, okay. uh, Jinzo did. Damien has never been really wrapped yeah, up. I he broke out briefly, of briefly. previous turn and yeah. then jumped mm -hmm. into pit. Right now, Damien okay, so. is at the bottom of this 15-foot pit. You and Jinzo are about 10 feet up. You are wrapped in these vines. These vines have gripped you. Jinzo is just sort of clinging to them now, as opposed to them wrapping him up. So wrapping around that's him. the situation. So, and Nazca yeah. is at the very top. She's dropped some rope. So if you could get free, you could probably pretty easily climb up. Okay. So this is a resolute again? It is a, if you're trying to break free, as you're strong modified by her yeah. resolute because it's the strength of her spell she's going to be minus five i <laughs> this is even if i take an audience i'm rolling i am attempting to roll under four hey i hear you one. i can't i can't hit jeremy you could no i really can't <laughs> like um, i mean it's like a, it's like a one in six chance and then i probably wouldn't be able to damage you uh, yeah, so I am. I it? am here. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> You're still yeah. there. You're still stuck. Uh, Someone could help you though. Jinsha could potentially help you in the next round. Nas could potentially help you in the next round. So like, there's there's potential ways to get you out of here. Okay. Anything else? Uh, and she's just gonna still uh, ask her, uh Yeah, any time now. Uh, any at any time. <laughs> I am still not out. Still not and out. Nazca, it is your time. It is your turn. What would you like to do? Rowena, right now, you are actually quite safe. Um, I am going to, you know, safe enough. <laughs> <laughs> Says the person that's a, not in the pit. Uh, I am going to see if I can assassin creed this lady. I Yay. would like to get above her in the pit and jump down on her with my swords pointed down. Wow. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. freaking uh, Yes. Yeah, cool. So you're going to hop down and try to just stab her from above. Yeah. Okay. Um, above. Okay. I'm technically getting flanking from Damien, by the way. Sort of. <laughs> arguably. I mean, I you're not going to. You're not going to get that, but you're also he jumping rules down a pit he's below and I'm above with crisscrossing like roots blanking, right? and vines <laughs> and cloth. I can barely see your target. So there's a lot more against you than there is in favor of you, but it sounds really cool. Uh, yeah. I would say you're going to roll. You can make your attack um, as you leap down. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a point of damage, I think, just from the pure fall of it. Because uh, this is 15 feet you're dropping. Yep. Uh, through a lot of things that are lashing at you along the way. Yep. But you can make nice, your attack. Nice, nice. Um, These ones are mine. Back the fuck off. Plus three. Normally it would be plus oh, five, but plus sorry, three. Sorry. Uh, no, you're good. That I rolled before. Uh, with plus good. three, that would be a success. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I see. So you just you rolled flat. Is that what you did? Um, 
She's a big yeah, target. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't adjust. Target. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I just didn't adjust properly. Nazca, you leap down, the vines and roots lash out at you, and you plunge your blades into this thick, pulsing body. Uh, give me your damage, and then I'm going to tell you what's about to happen. Uh, so go ahead and let me know that damage. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes, yes, I totally... Wow. Remote attack using discreet damage. Where's the damage? There we go. Um, versus, this is just against their defense. Okay, sorry, I'm just going to see if I can't... This is just to see if I can't trigger oh. the damage. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh, well, there you go. What's the total? The damage is 12. Okay. So I she's didn't got do poisoning. It's okay. She's got some stuff that's effectively going to reduce that because uh, she has the robust uh, trait, mm -hmm. uh, which allows her. And then I'm going to hit with my parrying dagger as well. Yeah, she is. One sec. Yep. Uh, so three points, then three points, robust. then five. Okay. So not all of that's going to go through to the point where it doesn't. The damage you do doesn't actually hit her. Hit her. Her threshold. Okay. Uh, <gasps> go ahead and do your, uh, and then hang on before you do your second attack. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I need you and Damien to both roll a defense test. Oh, interesting. Uh, da -da -da, defense armor. There we go. Uh, da -da, against their just resolute or. Yeah, it's just it's just defense. Just make a defense okay. test. I don't. It's not sure. modified by her, so it's just a flat defense, I think. So anybody who's and in melee, manigans. I am fine. Okay, both of you made it. Her yeah, blood yep. splurts out, <laughs> whoops, and begins to on some of your armor and clothes in the ground, but fortunately, it doesn't These land on expensive. any of your skin. Okay. Uh, and then go ahead and do the second oh, one. My gosh. If you would like to do the This is so expensive. Yes, I do. Um, yes, 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 yes. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. That should be good. Uh, yes. That is, there we go. Uh, parrying dagger, I hit again, and I do a total of six damage this time. Okay. Um, very little of that goes through. Uh, yeah. But it is still enough to splurt out additional blood. Both of you yeah. go ahead and make a defense test as more acid blood goes spraying onto the two of you. This oh, this this looks really cool. Oh, shoot. oh dear. Those are some bad rolls. Uh, that <gasps> would be a fail from both of us. At least <sighs> I didn't roll the 20. Okay. So this... How much damage protection? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, so this is going to deal five points of damage. So I got two. And so removing the acid from either body or armor requires that someone spends an action. Okay, so it's five points of damage, and it would it's basically going to continue until, much like Jinzo, it's wiped off. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, hey, look. So Damien takes some damage. Uh, next up, uh, it is top of the round. Let me do my hornet stings. Okay. Damien uh, and Jinzo, both of you go ahead and make resolute tests uh, as the minus two as the hornets begin okay. to sting. Uh, all right, you're one off her threshold on the on the first attack, but her her robust basically mitigated some of the damage you did. And okay, I failed. All right. Again. Uh, okay. You're rolling it again. Yeah, I'm going to use Steadfast and give it another try. I like that much better. Man, that, that talent Natty is paying off. One. Roll, you roll a 20 and a 1. The last couple of rolls. Okay. Uh, one point of temporary corruption to Jinzo as, uh, as one of these... Uh, as one of these hornets and nothing to Damien. Uh, Damien is your turn. Okay, so if something takes an active action, that would mean if I tried to do the leadership thing, I would have to forego doing a regular attack, right? That's correct, yeah. 
Uh, that's tempting, but at the same time, I'm torn. Part of me just wants to actually. I'm just going to attack. Cause... Okay. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, I would say with the two of you down here now, together, both on your both like both here, you can go mm-hmm. ahead and take advantage on the swing. Okay. So that's that. uh, D four damage and plus two to your hit. Okay. Uh, give it a go. Uh, I'll just click the thing that lets me do. Okay, twelve. Okay, twelve. She's got her robust stuff. That's going to ignore some of that. All right, so she is going to twelve total. That means six is going to get through. Not enough to hit her threshold. She's a threshold of seven. Uh, and she is not yet dead, but very, very close to it. And I need both of you to go ahead and make another defense test Can as this swing <laughs> sends this acidic blood splurting everywhere. Wow. It's all fine Ooh. and well when you had her spurt acid Ooh. on me, but now when I'm the one swinging, it's wrong. Yes, that Nazca's is correct. Nazca's complaining. Nazca's both like, hold okay. on. Hold but if on. you manage, having seen it a few times, you kind of turn and maybe it gets on your packs or makes maybe it, like you dodge oh. out of it as it slashes against the wall and you're both okay. Uh, oh. Jinzo, it is your turn. You can hear fighting from below. Uh, you are free from the vines. What would you like to do? Swat the hornets away and make my way towards Ruena. Try to cut her out a bit. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, you can, you can either do... You can just do an attack if you wanted. If you just wanted to like, kind of like okay. cut through them, I'm fine with that. Uh, it's probably better than trying to physically pull them apart. Success on the attack? The damage is because I was at 10. 10 damage is plenty to just cut through any of the vines that were, that were around Ruena. Uh, and I'll say, Ruena, you are effectively free from these entangling vines now. Uh, I would have needed to Oh, thank roll. you. I thought I was... I thought I was never going to get out of these. <sighs> All right. Yeah, there's a down below. The two of you yes. are clinging to the ropes 10 feet above, or clinging to the the vines, the vines. Uh, maybe even Nazca's rope. That's 10 feet below you, below you. It's not even 10 feet. It's only a couple feet because you guys, your, your feet are kind of dangling above their heads uh, as the, uh, the battle below... Uh, she's going to turn and attack Nazca, um, and Nazca, go ahead and roll defense. You seem like a less, uh, difficult target to hit. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not less difficult. You're to just hit, quicker. Actually. Well, wow. considering what I have no, to roll. Quick. quicker. It's all my discreet. Okay. Oh. It's a bunch she of like bites out. bullshit. Yeah. I, yeah, you know, how, you know, I'm not, I'm saying happy thoughts. I'm saying happy thoughts about the game until we go off. Uh, bites out at you. You manage to dodge out of the way uh, and you are fine. Uh, Ruena comes to you. You are now free from the entangled vines. You've got Jinzo. You and him are kind of like swinging back and forth like you're hanging from tree branches up here. You hear the sounds of battle below. The sickly scent of this acid is now like that's the source of this rancid stench you can tell um what would you like to do Raina? so Raina would like to kind of get herself in a position if she can try to kind of climb up and kind of extend her quarter staff down um so that once they are ready to kind of climb up that she's kind of trying to get herself in a helpful sure. uh, situation yeah I think that's fine. Uh, we'll say wrap run arm like around the rope, hold the staff down in case they decide to try to flee, uh, and you are good to go. Nazca, she is very, very wounded. Uh, you can see there's huge slashes, your puncture wounds, and she is just oozing blood all to the ground at the end, at the bottom of his pit. Uh, would you like to try to finish her off? Oh, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever done. Okay. Here we go. I doubt that. You're a noble. (laughs) This is the most viscerally disgusting thing I've ever done. This This week, week? at least. 
Yeah. I mean, usually <laughs> when I kill them, they don't spurt like this. Uh, that is a total of seven damage with the fencing sword. It's and... exactly enough. Nope. All you oh. needed was literally to do seven damage because she can absorb six and you she had one health left. So your last, uh -huh. that, that one point of damage is literally enough to kill her. Does spend acid blood splurting. Don't spray and... me with blood. <laughs> <laughs> don't spray Actually, me with blood. Gosh. Hang on. Did you get hit one by it before? Did you get hit by blood? Did you get hit by the acid blood the first time? I did. <gasps> yes. So oh, I you take how... five points of acid damage. Oh shoot! Okay. Uh, That's that right. Is, that is yeah. that is painful. Uh, is. I have one HP with that. And with that last one <gasps> HP, mm -hmm. you stab in. Mm -hmm. The blood splurts. Both mm -hmm. you and Damien roll a defense test. It's this last splurt <laughs> of uh -oh. blood goes flying. Uh oh. I might just, you know, take up one from the audience just because to be safe. Fair oh. enough. Fair enough. Gosh. I didn't need it, but there we go. And you're okay. Thank uh -huh. you, audience. She falls. And there's no deflating that happens, but you do see, like, as she falls, all of the dozens of pustules and boils and blisters on her body pop. And you can see crawling out of it are these little hornets or oozing out of it are the larva of hornets they're gestating you see like there's like a shudder and then finally whoosh, she comes to a stop the blood continues to uh to pour out um damien give me a cunning mm -hmm. test to try to help nazca get this acid offer you see that Maybe on her arm, one of her sword arms that she stabbed, it got coated in some of her skin now. Give me a cunning test to wipe it off. Otherwise, she okay. will end up taking more damage. So oh I want to apologize in advance that Take I'm rolling the a cunning audience. check. Take the audience bonus. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> For me. <laughs> For you. Helping okay. me. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, there we go. There. Look at you. It's a low number. Wow. Jeremy's got to hit a low number. There is nothing that you can count on more to a small chance of success in Jeremy getting it. You managed so to wipe it for I have a five cutting. Yeah. You Damien rip off. Dumb as dirt. You rip off like the bloody soiled shirt that oh, Red no, Eye has so and you expensive. just wipe it off. The pants that had the blood stain. Just the pants. Oh, <laughs> you just you're wipe these pants off. You owe me a full outfit. <laughs> she deflates. <laughs> you reach up. One by one, you grab the staff, which goes to the rope. Mm. Jinzo can kind of help you as well. By the time you get out of the tent, uh, you're kind of probably still being harassed a little bit by the hornets, but enough that you can kind of cover maybe one or two bites go through, but probably nothing that's going to trigger your, your thresholds. You realize that this little circular area where, uh, where all these hollow eyes were staring at you all is this effectively empty like you see the two people out front of your tent you can see all the others that were around here all of them have fled you can see the the planks that they had pulled out to create that opening in the floor are off to the side uh the sun has gone down a little bit further there's the last ribbons of orange and red in the sky but all of you are alive uh and ragama is dead and we're going to go ahead and end there and we'll pick up on that uh next week Yes, we wow. did come here to kill a witch. Uh, oh my god! You guys are fighting well, the alien wow. queen. Yeah, xenomorph blood. I thought I it was said, suitable. Yes, uh, I just said in chat that was not at all what I thought was going to happen. No, when we came yeah. no. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, but the fun. arrow holes. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I know. I wasn't sure oh. you guys were going to pick up on that or not. I'm just like, let's oh, go. Yeah, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah. It's like yes. Jeremy had said something. I put him like I can't remember if that's J if Jeremy wants me to clarify or if that is just him playing Damien not remembering. And I'm just like, all right, I'm not gonna say anything. Damien's so. not super bright, and he literally had people climbing on like climbing on him. So yeah, yeah. So he fired he fired a couple arrows into the brush, killed a person. Mm -hmm. Fired another arrow into the brush, hit a different woman. The woman he let go. The body was there, and like you guys had dragged the bodies to the road and then left them, presuming. Uh, somebody was going to come collect them mm -hmm. and someone did. Uh, okay. Uh, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it for us. Uh, that is it. Uh, we will pick up uh, with more of that. We'll get Aaron back in and we'll see what you guys want to do next. Uh, as some of you are quite hurt. You're at one health. Nazca? 
Yes. One hundred. What is it? What is ginger at? Ginger at like four? Yeah, I'm a four right now. If that acid would have ticked, you would have taken five yeah. damage and you would have gone to zero. So yeah. And Rubino had came in with five, and so yeah. if the acid had hit her, she would have been down. That's why I kept oh you tied to the wall. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been real bad. Like, you know what? You aren't getting attacked here. <laughs> All right. So uh, normally I would throw it to Aaron uh, for uh, stuff about Garblag. So what I'll say is check out Garblag on Wednesdays because that's when he's running his Marvel game uh, where he's running his uh, uh, Catechism of Kang. Kang? What is it? What's it called again? Catechism, Catechism of, Kang. of Kang. He's done his own thing with it too. So it's not, I don't think it's like perfectly There's in line X-Men with it. He's, he's added. It's very yeah. exciting. Just go check them out. <laughs> Garbage Games, they're one of our one of our friends. Uh, we love their stuff. Uh, and then, uh, as for us, tomorrow night is our next game. You can see a couple of us here back to playing Delta Green. Uh, you can see on uh, Saturday, uh, our good buddy, Steven, our dear friend who popped in the chat earlier, uh, he has made a game called Huckleberry. Uh, it is a weird West game. We are running it on Saturdays for a couple weeks. Uh, I think it's going to be the finale of our run, uh, but you never know. You never know. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so come hang out, watch us play, watch us do some crazy stuff. Uh, Monday, uh, we've got aliens. Speaking of acid blood, uh, we're very near the end of that. Could also be the finale of that campaign. Not sure. We're going to play that by ear. We're just going to let it end naturally, uh, but we're getting close. Uh, and then Tuesday, you can see, uh, us digging into Star Trek adventures, uh, the second edition. Uh, and, uh, you can meet, uh, the big Lebowski in space, uh, is basically what we have. Uh, with one of our characters <laughs> who wears sunglasses and caves. What? Oh, goodness. So, then, Look, so, Star Trek so, has the serious, so which is all of you, and then Star Trek Whoa. has the campy, which is me. Usually not in the same same cast. <laughs> <laughs> they merge together. Yeah, you yeah. have episodes that are totally campy yeah. in a serious one. It's so funny because, like, as I was talking about, I'm like, I'm like, I glad I didn't do my John Travolta character because, like, both of them together, I feel, I feel like, oh, that would have been given, so funny. We would have given some people, poor Steven. We given, yeah, people's brains would melted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> other things, check out the YouTube page, Adventures and Lollygagging. Got all our past games, uh, lots of fun stuff. So go ahead and check that out in our uh, our podcast feed, Adventures and Lollygagging. We are going to pay our raids forward. We got a couple of raids tonight from Blue Cottage, D&D, uh, Demon X, and Matt in a Hat. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, go ahead and check out what they're doing as well. Uh, so let's pay it forward. Let's raid. See, normally I get this set up why Aaron's doing his plug, but I, I didn't have it. So it's a Raid of Saudi Night uh, RPG. They're also our friends. Let's do that. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. The have a great rest of your night. And the hype and everything. See ya. Bye. Later.